الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Now we will go on to lesson number 5 which speaks about the types of ism types of noun by jins by the jins by the genus First of all he mentions number 1 that there are two types of ism according to the genus either they can be mudhakkar masculine or they can be muannath which is feminine okay number one ism mudhakkar masculine noun is that ism which does not have a sign of femininity okay which does not have a sign of it being feminine a sign of it being feminine feminine is a sign is alamat femininity is tanis it does not have alamat tanis it does not have a sign of being feminine it doesn't have a sign of being feminine for example the word farasun farasun means horse farasun it is a masculine word because it has no sign of being feminine so it is mudhakkar what is it mudhakkar mudhakkar feminine masculine masculine sorry it is masculine because there's no sign of being feminine and what is uh, feminine muannath muannath right so it's not muannath because there's no sign of being muannath number 2 is some muannath that noun which is feminine that is the one which has a sign of femininity in it all right that one which has a sign that noun which has a sign of it being feminine feminine if it has a sign of it being feminine then it shall be ism muannath you understand yeah ism muannath yeah so an example of this one is naqatun naqatun means a female camel because this has got a sign of femininity it is isme muannath okay and the sign of it being feminine can either be a lafzan right in words the sign is apparent in words right or it can be taqdiran taqdiran means hidden okay yeah. for example in the example they gave naqatun the round ta at the end ta do besh to na ta yeah that is a sign sign of it being feminine feminine na qatun and so that was a muannath lafzi yeah it was a feminine uh, it was feminine noun which was lafzi which had the word you could see it you could see a round ta there that's a sign of it being feminine or sometimes it could be muannath taqdiri it could have a sign alamat e tanis which is taqdiri which is hidden but you know still know that this is a feminine word for example uh the word ardun which means earth okay and this is muannath taqdiri it has a taqdiri sign of it being alamat e taqdiri of it being muannath feminine so the sign of femininity can either be apparent like lafzi like this one naqatun naqatun how can you tell is in uh, muannath lafzi because it's got ta at the end the round ta all right or it could be muannath uh, with a alamat with a sign which is taqdiri taqdiri what would a taqdiri sign be you know it is feminine but it hasn't got an apparent sign on it okay yeah. like the word ardun which means earth okay how can you tell ardun earth is muannath it's when you do tasghir we spoke about this in a few lessons earlier tasghir means when you break that word and you make it like a smaller form of it Small. right oh, yeah, yeah. like we said tifal means baby tufail when it goes on that version it means small baby, small baby. asad means lion usaid means small lion but when you do tasghir of ard ard and when you do tasghir of it uraidatun it becomes what does it become oraida 
Tun. Tun. So when you do tasgir of it, what could be apparent? The ta, the round ta, which is a sign of feminine. Ta feminine. Do you understand? We're being feminine. So, do you understand? Yeah. And the qaida, the rule is that when you do the sagir of an ism, when you scale it down, yeah. right? Smaller, when you get the smaller scale of any noun, then that is its or original form. All right? Yeah. So now we know ardun, apparently it doesn't look feminine, does it? No. Because there's no sign of. Yeah, femininity, there's no alamat taanith. But then we do tasghir of it when you break it down and you look, uraidatun. The ta becomes apparent in tasghir form. The tasghir form, the smaller form, was the original form. Therefore, we understand that ardun is mu'annath. But we're not going to say it's mu'annath lafzi. It's not mu'annath with the laf, the word is apparent. But it's mu'annath which has a sign which is takdiri. Takdiri means it is hidden there. Alright? So, Next, now we've done ism mudhakkar. Masculine noun is the one which has no sign, no alamat taanith. Ism mu'annath is the one which has a sign of alamat taanith. Whether that sign is lafzi or whether that sign is takdiri. You understand? Whether that sign is apparent in the word or whether that sign is hidden. How do you find out from the hidden one? When you do tasgir. You, break, you get the smaller form. And in the smaller form, you get its original form. And then you can tell that this is also Mu'annath. Do you understand? Yeah. Next, Alamat, Alamat Taanith. Alamat is a plural. Alamat means sign. Alamat means signs. signs. Of Taanith, femininity. There are three signs of a word being feminine in Arabic. Number one, the round Ta. Right? Yeah. For example, Bakaratun, uh, right? Cow. It's got ta, do at the end. The round ta, and that is a sign of it being feminine. Mm -hmm. Number two, Alif Makasura. For example, in the word Bushra. Which word? Bushra. Bushra means good news, like glad tidings. Yeah? Yeah. And Bushra, it has Alif Makasura. A small alif. You see, there's a a ya there, yeah. but there's a kara zabar, like on top there. Yeah. Yeah. So that is like alif makasura that is known as. Why is that? Alif makasura. Right? Bushra. It has a ya and then the karyat cut there. That is alif makasura. Right? And that is like makasura means kasar, it is broken. Right? It is like reduced. It's a smaller type one. And then number three is Alif Mamduda. Right? So the U. Right? You can see there, there's a full Alif there. So Alif Mamduda. It is a stretched Alif. Because yeah. it's full one there. But in Alif Makasura, it's not a full one, is it? Okay. But both of these Alifs, like in So the U, which means black. Yeah? yeah? These are a sign of it being. Mu'annath, feminine. So what were the three signs? A round ta, yeah. an alif makasura, and thirdly, an alif mamduda. So when you look at these examples and copy them down, then you can remember them, yeah. right? Next, it mentions a benefit here, a faida. The types of mu'annath, mu'annath has been divided, categorized in two ways, right? Number one, When we understand whether a mu'annath is a living thing or it is a non-living thing, okay? Mu'annath ke muqable mein narjandar ho, hone ya na hone ke etibar se. When that mu'annath has got an opposite, right? Which is living thing or which is a non living thing, okay? And number two is whether the Mu'annith at the end of it has a sign of Danith or whether it doesn't have a sign of Danith. 
right? So these are the two types of taqsim division. Let's concentrate on the first division. The first division, yeah? There are two types on this. It could be muannath haqiqi and muannath lafdi. This was the category to do with whether muannath has a living thing and which is the opposite. Yeah. All right? Let's have a look at this now. Muannath haqiqi and muannath lafzi. Muannath haqiqi. What is the definition of muannath haqiqi? Muannath, that muannath which has a living thing which is opposite to it. All right? Which has a living thing which is opposite, opposite to it. That muannath which has opposed to it a living thing. Right? Regardless of whether this Mu'annath has a sign of Ta'nis or doesn't have a sign of Ta'nis. Okay? So what is Mu'annath Hakiki? That Mu'annath which has an opposite which is a living thing. It has an opposite which is a living thing. And then regardless of whether this Mu'annath has a sign of Ta'nis or doesn't have a sign of Ta'nis. But the only thing we know for this Mu'annath is it's got an opposite yeah. which is a living thing. It has got an opposite, which is a living thing. Now look at the example. Imra'atun. 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 Right? Which refers to a woman. Right? And this has got an opposite, which is Imra'un, without Dida. What does that mean? Man. Right? So this is Mu'annath Hakiki. Right? This is Mu'annath Hakiki. Why? Because it is a feminine word, right? It has an opposite which is also a living being, right? And that's why it is known as Mu'annath Hakiki. It's that feminine word which has an opposite which is also a living being. What was the feminine word? Imra'atun. Woman and this opposite was Imra'un, which means man. And because that is a living being, which is the opposite of this one, therefore, this one is known as Mu'annath Hakiki, a real feminine word. Okay, this is a real feminine noun. And we also mention, regardless of whether this one has got a ta at the end or hasn't got a sign, you know, a ta is like a sign, eh? regardless of whether this Mu'annath has got a sign of Tanis. Alamat Tanis or whether it hasn't got Alamat Tanis. Now I'll give you an example where it hasn't got Alamat Tanis. Another example it gives here is Atanun. Atanun means a female donkey. Atanun. It has an opposite, which is what? Gonna be a male donkey, a male living being. Himarun. Yes. Himarun yes. means a donkey, which is a male donkey. But the female donkey is known as Atanun. So what is Atanun? Yeah, but what is it in definition? It is Mu'annath Haqiqi. It is Mu'annath Haqiqi. Mu'annath Haqiqi. Yeah? Now, this is Mu'annath Haqiqi, a real feminine noun. Why? Because it has got an opposite being, which is living. An opposite, which is a living being, which was Himaru, the male donkey. And this one itself, it, regardless of whether it has a sign of Tanis or not. Tanis. Does it have a sign of Tanis in this example? It doesn't, does it? No. It's just Atanun. Yeah. It looks like a normal word, like a normal word, masculine word without any sign. But it is known as Mu'annath Hakiki. Why? Because it has an opposite living, living being which is uh, opposite to it, okay? Obviously, which is masculine, yeah? yeah? You understand? So these examples you can understand. And then you understood the second part of the rule, which was so this Mu'annath Hakiki. Does it have to have a sign of Tanis? No. It just has to have an opposite living being. That's all. Yeah. An opposite living being. Number two, Mu'annath Lafzi. The definition of that feminine noun, which is Lafzi, which is apparent in words, okay? Yeah. And this one, which is apparent in words, would be, Wo Mu'annath, that Mu'annath, which does not have an opposite living being. 
Okay? Yeah. This does not have an opposite living being. This will be known as Mu'annath Lafzi. Right? And regardless of whether this has a sign of femininity in it or not. Okay? So Mu'annath Lafzi is that Mu'annath, that feminine noun, which does not have an opposite living being. Okay? The Mu'annath Hakiki had an opposite living being. Mu'annath Lafzi does not have an opposite living being. Living being right? Regardless of whether this Mu'annath has a sign of Tanis or whether it doesn't. So this is regardless as well. Okay? Yeah. But only thing that we need to know from Mu'annath Lafzi is it does not have a living Opposite. It does not have a opposite which is a living being. Yeah. Alright? Mona Sakiki had an opposite which is a living. living being. Like we gave them two examples, okay? Yeah. Imra'atun and Imra'un. Woman and man. And then we had Atanun and Himarun. Female donkey and male donkey. Okay? Yeah. In both cases, what was the reason of it being Mu'annath Hakiki was because it was a feminine word which has a living opposite. In Mu'annath Lafzi, it is going to be feminine word, but it's not going to have a living, op a living opposite. Right? For example, Zulmatun. The word Zulmatun. This means darkness. Okay? Yeah. Another example is Ainun. Ainun means fountain. Ain can also be used for many other things. It can also mean I, yeah. etc. Uh, but here it is mentioned of Ainun being a fountain. Okay, so you see from here these two words. It's regardless of whether they have a sign of femininity or not, whether they've got alamat tanis or not. Look, the first one zulmatun yeah. has got a sign of tanis. What's that? The round ta at the end. What about Ainun? There's no sign of it. But how we know these two are both Mu'annath? Lafzi, they are Mu'annath Lafzi, Mu'annath in word, yeah. is because they haven't got a living being. being which is opposite to them. Is there an opposite of Zulmatun, darkness, in a living being? No. No? Right? And has Ainun, a fountain of water, has it got an opposite which is a living being? No. no. So these are Mu'annath Lafzi, Mu'annath in word. Then we need to understand next, there is another division further here then it says there are two types of further division here right Mu'annath Qiyasi and Mu'annath Sima'i right Mu'annath Qiyasi, the first one. What is Mu'annath Qiyasi? That Mu'annath which has alamat taanith apparent in it. Yeah. That is called Mu'annath Qiyasi. Alright? Mu'annath Qiyasi. This one has the sign of femininity apparent. Okay? Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. For example, Aishatu, the name Aishatu, yeah? it has a round da at the end. Yeah. The sign of Tanis is apparent in this. Yeah. So this is known as Mu'annath Qiyasi. Yeah. Next is, number two was Mu'annath Sima'i. The definition of Mu'annath Sima'i, what is that? That Mu'annath, which does not have Alamat Tanis apparent in it. The sign of being feminine is not apparent in it. Then it's known as Mu'annath Sima'i. Right? It does not have Alamat Tanis apparent in it. However, the Arabs use this word as a feminine word. Alright? Yeah. Whenever they refer to it, they refer to this word as her or as she. Yeah. Alright? In the Arabic use of language, it's referred to as a feminine, feminine word. word. So then it's known as Mu'annath Sima'i. It's to do with, it's been heard that way. Yeah. The Qiyasi one was the one which had a sign in it. Yeah. Right? 
a sign of femininity. But this one, Mu'annath Sima'i, it has no sign in it. Yeah. But it's been heard yeah, like, it. like this from the Arabs. Yeah. For example, Ardun, there's no sign in it. No. There's no round ta, there's no alif maqsura, there's no alif mamduda, is there? No. There's no small alif and large alif, is there? No. no. But it is still known as feminine. Why? It's been heard like that from the Arabs. Also, Shamsun, you know, the sun. Yeah. Again, another feminine word. Do you understand now? Yeah. Then he mentions a benefit here. It states that the Arabs use certain words which are feminine, which we shall list here. Right? Yeah. And these are Mu'annath Sima'i. These are those feminine words which have been heard to be feminine. They're not Mu'annath Qiyasi. Yeah. Because the sign, Alamat of Tanis, is not apparent in them. Okay? So now what he mentions here, he mentions words here which the Arabs use, some words here, which are Mu'annath Sima'i, which are feminine, okay? Uh, examples of these words he will use here. Harbun, which means war or battle. This is Mu'annath Qiyasi. Number two, Ka'sun, which is like a small plate, like a container for used for food, yeah? Ka'sun, yeah. it is also Mu'annath Sima'i. Right? Then it mentions Af'a Af'a is like a mischievous snake. Right? Falakun Falakun means the sky. Na'lun Na'lun which means shoe. Bi'run Bi'run which means well. These are all feminine Mu'annath Sima'i words, yeah, which the Arabs have been using them as feminine words. Right? Nabun. Uh, nabun is uh, a teeth, a type of tooth, yeah, is also feminine. Tha'labun, fox. Yeah. Arnabun, rabbit. These are all feminine words. Ardun, the earth. Shamsun, the sun. Okay. Then it mentions all the names of women. <laughs> all the names of women are going to be Mu'annath Sima'i. What are they going to be Mu'annath? Sima'i. Because the Arabs have used these for women, okay? Like Maryamun, Zainabun, Hindun. Yeah. Look, even though there's no sign of Danis in these, is there? No. There's no sign of Danis in these because they are Mu'annath Sima'i. But they've been heard to be used for women. Yeah. So are these going to be referred to as masculine? No. no. They're going to be feminine, but they are Mu'annath Sima'i. Alright? Yeah. They're not Mu'annath Qiyasi. Why? Because Mu'annath Qiyasi has a sign of being feminine. Yeah. Either a round da, a small alif, or a large alif. Next. Then it says, those asma, those ism, which are specific to women. For example, ummun, mother. Yeah? Urusun, which means bride. These are specific to women. Yeah. So these are also going to be Mu'annath Sima'i. Next, he mentions the names of all types of intoxicant liquids, you know, alcohol, sharab. Yeah. Uh, for example, khamrun, right? For all intoxicating beverages, intoxicating drinks, it will always be Mu'annath Sima'i. All right? Yeah. It will be a feminine one. All the names of hellfire, then he mentions, like Sa'irun, Jahimun, Sakarun, these are all feminine. These are all Mu'annath Sima'i. Next, he mentions those parts of the body of which we have two eyes, ears, hands, etc. Do you understand? Yeah. These are all going to be what? Mu'annath Sima'i. For example, he mentions here Yadun. Yadun, the hand, yeah? Rijulun, uh, leg, right? And Udunun. What's Udunun? Ear. Yeah. Right? Ainun, the eye. These are all in pairs. The yeah. human body parts which come in pairs, they are always going to be Mu'annath Sima'i. They are always going to be feminine, right? Uh, and then it states that some asma, some asma, some asma, some is uh, nouns 
are unisex like they are used both Mu'annath and Muzakkar. All right, they're both, uh, they can also be masculine, they can also be feminine, right? Sum Asma. And then it gives examples of these. It mentions Sikkinun, uh, Sikkinun, which means knife, right? And then it mentions Sulamun, which is a ladder. Sukun, which is a marketplace. Yeah? Sabilun, which means a path. Tariqun, which also means a way or a path. Yeah. Uh, so you can see, there's a few here. Halun, which means your condition or state. Yeah. Hanutun, uh, which means a shop. Lisanun, which means tongue. Yeah. Nafsun, which is your life, your soul. Nafs. Yeah. Samaun, which is the sky. Um, ruhun, soul. And then it also mentions baladun, which means a city. Or a town or a country, Baladun. Yeah, these are both Mu'annath and Mudakkar, okay, feminine and masculine. These words can be used in both. Do you understand? Yeah. So, basically, just to summarize the whole lesson, yeah, why it was, yeah, we stated first of all, Ism can be Mudakkar or it can be Ism can be Mu'annath, it can be masculine or it can be feminine. Basically, it's masculine if it has no sign of Dani, nice. no sign of femininity. Yeah. Then it is Mu'annath if it has a sign of femininity in it. Then we mentioned the signs of femininity being three. A round ta, a small alif, or a large alif. Alif maqsura or a alif mamduda. Yeah? Then we went on further to mention division of mu'annath. We said mu'annath can be haqiqi or mu'annath can be lafzi. Mu'annath haqiqi is the one which has an opposite living being. Mu'annath lafzi is the one which does not have an opposite living being. And these two are regardless of whether they have got a sign of tanis or not. Then the second type of taqseem, Mu'annath uh, Qiyasi and Mu'annath Sima'i. What was Mu'annath Qiyasi? That which has a sign of Ta'anith in it, Mu'annath Qiyasi. Mu'annath Sima'i, it does not have a sign of uh, Ta'anith in it. However, it's been heard from the Arabs to be read that way. Do you understand? Yeah. That's the end of Ta'anith.